So the first video for the coding fundamentals series I started was a big failure. It was one of my worst videos. But you guys aren't going to get away without knowing the fundamentals, whether it's the last thing I do on this channel. So in this video, we're gonna restart the series, but using Dart and Flutter as a reference instead of Python. And this first video is basically about how code compiles overall, and then how specifically Flutter and Dart code gets compiled into Android, iOS, web, and native code. So let's get into it. So like I said, in the beginning, I want to start with the very basics of programming pretty much. So this series can cover everybody from beginner all the way to an expert. So before we get into details of how Flutter compiles, let's get into how programming actually works. So we start off from the very beginning with the question, what is programming? Programming is just a sequence of instructions. But how does the computer actually understand those sequence of instructions? So just like humans use language to express each other, computers also have their own language except their language is a lot simpler. It's just either on or off. So these on or off are called binary. They can either be a zero or a one. Zero means it's off, one means it's on. And using these two states, that's how every pixel gets displayed on your screen. And then I quickly wanna go over exactly how a computer works. So a computer has three major parts. It has the CPU, which people call like the brain of the computer, but I don't know if I like that analogy, which I'll explain later. But the CPU basically does the actual computations, the mathematics behind whatever is written in your code. And then the reason I don't like it being called the brain of the computer, because there's a thing called RAM, which is like the memory of the computer. I like to refer to it as the short term memory. And I mean, a brain has a memory as well. So that's that's kind of why I don't really like the whole analogy. But anyways, then we have the storage, which is like the long term memory. And you need this because the RAM Whenever you turn off the power, you need something to be stored while it is off. So that's what external storage is used for. You've probably heard of hard drives or SSDs, things like that. And those are the main components of the computer. Obviously there's like power and all these other things, but these are the main ones. So I think an even better way to explain these is by going through what exactly happens when you write a program. So let's pretend you have Visual Studio Code open or some other editor and you're typing out your program. While you're typing it, it's getting stored into the RAM. The RAM is mostly for programs that are being used currently and need the resources right now. RAM's a lot faster than all the external storage. So you type it out, you click the run button, and you should see something execute. The thing that does the execution is the CPU. Obviously the CPU is doing some background stuff while you're typing out the program, but just forget about that for now. And now let's get to your program finishes running. You're ready to close your laptop for the day. And while you're closing that laptop, it runs through a shutdown cycle and your program gets moved to the storage. Now here, it can stay for as long as you want until you wake up the next morning, you're ready to use it again. You wanna run your program, it's loaded into RAM, and you're ready to go. So now let's get back to the first point. When I told you the language that a computer speaks is just zeros and ones or on and off. So then how the heck do you write the program, which usually is words similar to English or some other language? And then how does the computer actually run that program? So your program gets sent through this thing called a compiler. Compilers are different based on the language and what platform you want to go to. And there's sometimes more complicated steps, including an assembler and things like that. But we're just gonna stick to the very basics. And basically a compiler takes your English code or whatever language you're using for us, the Dart code, and transforms it into ones and zeros so that the phone or the laptop or the embedded system can use it. So all right, enough hypotheticals of how programming works overall. Let's get into the actual Dart language and the Flutter framework and how that works. So okay, Flutter is just a framework built on the Dart language. So you don't actually need to use Flutter in order to use Dart. So to get Dart, just go to the Dart website and then all the way in top right, it says get Dart. Once you have it installed, you should be able to do Dart version and you'll see we're using 2.10.4. And for this in future videos, we're gonna be using Dart in VS Code. So make sure you have the Dart extension and might as well just install the Flutter extension since they go pretty hand in hand. And here we're gonna create our first file. So we'll do a hello world dot Dart file. You should see the little Dart icon here. So the way Dart works, the entry point for the app is in the main function. A lot of other languages have main functions, but pretty much let's just copy this, we'll paste it in here. And if we save it, this is our first Dart code. So this main is a function, and it's the first function that gets called whenever you run the program. The type void means there's nothing being returned from this function. And then print. It's just going to print it out onto our terminal screen. And that's probably as simple of a program as you can get. So we can click run up here and you'll see 
hello world pops out on our terminal. So if you use Flutter, you'll still see the first function is still the main function, but then you have to call this thing called run app, which basically leads to the first widget that it needs to build. But that's the video for a separate time. So in VS Code, when you click this run, it compiles it to the actual code that the computer can understand. The computer runs it, and this print function basically tells it to go to the terminal and print it out here. And then we have a debug mode, which starts a debug session, but then does the same thing. This basically lets you put breakpoints in here if you want. A breakpoint basically stops the code at that spot, just like that. And you see it didn't print anything, but then we can run it again and it prints it out. Then one thing you'll come to find out is Dart actually has a bunch of different compilers. We have the basic compiler, we have the Dart2.js, the Dart to native compiler, and each one of these compiles differently depending on what platform you're using. So Dart to JS is web platform, and Dart to native is used for desktop apps, I believe. You might be able to use it for web as well, I'm not sure. But instead of using Dart to native and Dart to JS directly, we can actually just use Dart compile command, and that will compile it to whatever we need. So we can do Dart compile, and let's say we want an exe, and then we want to compile the hello world app. So run it. Give it a second to compile and you'll see we generated a file called hello world.exe. And now we can actually run this file. And you'll see, pops out hello world. Now before we move any further, I want to go over the question of what is Flutter? You've probably heard the word of Flutter is a framework. So you might be asking, what exactly is a framework? A framework, and specifically the Flutter framework, is literally just Dart code with specific classes that make it easier to use that Dart code. That's especially why I think this series is very important. Very important to have the fundamentals of programming solid because that's actually what you're pretty much using whenever you use Flutter. If you're able to understand Dart code very well, or I guess any programming language very well, you'll have a much easier time developing Flutter apps. So if you've been working with Flutter, you've probably heard of the Flutter build modes. Now the build modes are used to actually build the Flutter app so that you can put it on your Android, iOS, web, Linux, whatever device you want. Now there's three build modes that Flutter currently supports. It's the debug, the profile, and then the release build mode. And you'll notice these build modes used the Dart compilers to create the actual code so that whatever device actually understands what's going on. So the debug mode lets you use hot reload and basically debug your app, like it says there. The profile mode lets you analyze the performance of the app. And then the release mode is the final production mode of the app that you want to put on the actual app store. And you'll notice, although it doesn't say anything here for regular mobile apps, it uses the Dart compiler. But then you, when you get to the web app, you'll notice it uses a Dart Dev C compiler. And that Dart Dev C is right here. You can read more about it here. If we go to the release mode, you'll notice that it uses the Dart to JS compiler that we talked about. And profile mode also uses the Dart JS compiler. All the links that I use for this video are in the description, so make sure to take a look at that. You can read more about this in the Flutter repository under wiki. And if you go to Flutter modes, you can read more about the debug, release, and profile modes here. So that pretty much covers the basics of programming and how Flutter code actually turns into native code. I hope you guys can understand the actual importance of knowing the fundamentals, whether it's of Dart or any language that you're using. But I hope this series will be useful. Hopefully we'll get to learn a lot more about how the Dart language and the backbone of Flutter actually works. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching.